As a kid, I always loved those cartoons of a guy stranded on a little tiny island with only one or two palm trees. I got a real kick out of those. It was like this fantasy of mine. I even drew cartoons of it myself. I guess it represented a fantasy of being away from society and all the stress and just having a simple life with sunlight and palm trees and coconuts and the clean air and the sea. And that image stayed with me my whole life. And ever since Kara came into my life about 10 years ago, we've been doing shipwreck themed pictures. Even though we didn't really have a little island, she'd dress up in tattered clothes and I'd get whatever beach or tropical island look I could get in the background. Most of them we did in Hawaii, wherever there was a beach or a palm tree or something. But the little island was still missing. Then in 2020, we went to Marlon Brando's Island, which is actually a chain of 12 little islands. They weren't the tiny islands from my cartoon, but they were the closest I've ever gotten to a really good shipwreck location. One of them had a lagoon, which is kind of like Gilligan's Island, and we did some really nice stuff there. There was a tree stub, and I actually jumped in the picture myself and joined it. It was fun doing that. It was like two people just hanging out on a tropical island. It was good. That was really cool. Then we did another one inspired by a sexy comic book by an Italian artist named Milo Manera about a girl that gets shipwrecked and the only thing she has available to make clothing is an old tattered British flag from the ship. And that photo shoot turned out really, really nice. And then a day later, we did another photo shoot on another Brando Island. And these shots turned out really good. But again, it was not a little tiny island that was only like a few feet across. This was still a pretty big island, so we had to show only the edge of the island. But it turned out really nice. You could tell it had a shipwreck theme to it, and it was really cool. I really like how these ones turned out. And I did videos showing how I made these photo shoots. I'll put the links down below. It would be another two years till we finally found a place that had a little tiny island just perfect for what I wanted to do. And that was boring. Bora Bora. The Four Seasons Resort in Bora Bora actually had this awesome little tiny island with two little palm trees on it and nothing else. And I said, this is perfect. And that's what this video is about. And they had no problem letting us shoot there. It was a little island with two palm trees, which is perfect. It wasn't very wide, but it was kind of long. So it still kind of looks like a sandbar and it does have that big island in the background. So I guess you could say, well, why doesn't she just swim over to the big island where there's more coconuts and stuff? But hey, it's the closest I've gotten so far of having a little tiny island with one or two palm trees on it. So I'm really happy I got this. I'm really thankful. And now I'm going to show you how we did it. The water was so shallow you could actually walk to the island and the water would only go up to your chest. I put all my equipment on a canoe and walked it out to the island so it wouldn't get wet. I had two light stands, two Godox 8600s and a bag full of photo gear including my A7 III and a big heavy Sigma 105, my 55 1.8, my 35 1.8 and my 24 1.8. 1.4 and a bunch of polarizing filters and ND filters. But I weighted down the light stands with some coral and rocks, whatever I could find at the water's edge. Now obviously I can't hide the lights. There's nothing you can hide them behind. So I knew I was going to have to photoshop them out, but that's not a big deal. So once I set up the lights, I walked the canoe with the camera gear out into the water. So I was about 50 to 75 feet away from the island so I could see the island and took the pictures from there. I rested my elbows on the canoe to keep it from drifting away, but it was definitely not steady. It was bobbing up and down. The camera was bobbing up and down. It was really hard to take a picture, but I managed to get the pictures and they turned out pretty good. Now she's really small in these pictures, so I wanted her to stand out against the background, which meant putting a bright edge light on her shadow side and lighting up her shadows also. Now a typical overthinking man would go, this makes no sense, there's no light source that would logically be there. I'm not a typical overthinking man. I just like things that look cool, they don't have to make sense. I just want it to pop out and give it this magical Hollywood lighting. And that's what I've always done. I don't think logically, I just like creating stuff that looks cool, even though it doesn't make sense. And this is what most of my pictures are like. I have light sources and edge lights hitting the subject from directions where there should be no light source. It just gives it this really cool 3D look like those old 3D postcards from the 60s. I love those. The wind was blowing her hair and her dress. I had to yell really loud for her to hear my directions. But she's a natural. She's a great actress, great model. She gets right into a role and we did some good stuff. And then I came onto the island and took my last few shots with a wider angle lens from a different direction. I actually like some of these behind the scenes shots where you see the lights, it just looks cool. I love showing gear, it's kind of cool. I like leaving it in for some shots. 
And then she wanted to go climb on the palm trees. And I said, okay, this was her idea, not mine. I don't put her in situations where I think she could hurt herself, but she wanted to do this. So I said, okay. And she did good. She didn't fall or anything. They turned out pretty good. Stuff like this just brings out the kid in you. You just want to have fun. You want to explore. You want to live out your little fantasies and pretend. And I think that's part of what keeps you young. It's fun to have these fantasies. And it's even more fun when you have camera gear to capture it. So that's what we love to do. We just love to go all these exotic places and have fun. And then we can look back on this years from now and go, wasn't that cool? Look at that. That's what's so wonderful about photography. It captures dreams and creates memories. So I hope I'm helping do that for you, where you can go out and capture your own memories. I'll see you in the next video.